Welcome back to another episode of RimWorld Science, where today we're going to have a little bit of a look at cover and accuracy. Had a number of questions about how this works and a few misconceptions that I've seen, so I thought it'd be worth taking a minute to clear things up. And uh, to think about accuracy when your shooter is shooting, there. Well, if you have a drafted colonist and you hold a mouse over a potential target, you can see there are. It gives you the breakdown. So there's a 13% chance of Dora here being shot by Bjorn. Uh, that's because the shooter himself only has a 31% chance of hitting. The weapon uh, only has a 63% chance of hitting. And the cover modifies that by 65. So if you take 31, take 63% of that, and 65% of that, the result is about 13. So these values, the shooter accuracy, the weapon accuracy, and sort of the post cover accuracy get multiplied together to get the, the percent the chance that this thing's actually going to hit. So to understand how accuracy works in RimWorld, we'll look at those three things in turn. So first, let's look at the shooter accuracy. We've got Bjorn here, who is a zero for shooting, many here who's a 20 for shooting, and Dora, who's a 10. Now, if we come, let's say, over, we'll start with Dora here, because this is the most straightforward, and I go to shooting accuracy, you'll see it says there's a base value, and then there's a skill factor. So because of her skill factor, um, of 10, she gets a 50%. And this, this is really more like her base. And then health factors, if her manipulation had gone down, then, then this value would be like modified with a 70% weight on how much down her manipulation has gone. And sight, if the, it goes up or down, if the sight gets better or worse, that's going to modify this value uh, with the exception that you can't get like more than double. So even if she had like the best bionic eyes ever, she couldn't get, you know, more than this up to 100%. Now this number here then gets put into a rather complicated mathematical formula. This is the post-process curve here. And it takes 50 up to 97. And the reason for that is just so it gives sensible results out of the kind of basic input. Uh, I don't have access to that formula, but I understand it's pretty complicated, kind of lots going on. But with the result, this shooter has a 97% uh, value uh, for her shooting accuracy. Now, basically, for every one skill level you get, this skill factor chance goes up by 5%. Now, there's a kind of exception at the very end. So Bjorn here, if you look, uh, it says he's got um, a shooting factor of zero, but then what goes in the pros process curve is not zero, but one. And I take it that's just because if you put zero in there, you get really wonky results. So zero goes up to one. Uh, similarly with many over here, uh, he's at 20 and his shooting accuracy, it says 100%, but then what goes in is 99.8 that gets bumped up to 99. Uh, again, that's just for giving the math wouldn't work out right if you did that. But for everything else in the, in the middle, you get uh, five, you know, five point increases. And then so, you know, for one, you would have 5% going here, two, you'd have 10, uh, three, 15, and so on and so forth. And that's how this value would get calculated and then get put into the post-process curve. It's on the wiki, but I will put up on screen as well, uh, a table of what kind of final values you could expect for different skill factors, assuming your manipulation and sight were at 100%. Now, the next thing to note is what those percentages actually do. So if you look here, I hover over it again, it's 89%. That's a base chance to not miss per square of shot distance. So we're here, I'm real close to Dora. Uh, sure enough, this is going to be the shooter is at 85. If I move her up to here, it uh, should go up to an 89. Sure enough, similarly down here with many at 99, yeah, 99. But now if I move her out a little bit, that shooter value is going to go down. And in fact, if I move it to here, it should go down to uh, 98 because, you know, 99% of 90% is 98. Uh, if I go down here, that's like 99 times 99 times 97 and so on and so forth. So that, so even many who's He's got here a legendary sniper rifle, so it's going to have, at long distances, 100% accuracy, and he himself has a, as high accuracy as you can get without bionics. Even so, with him, only 77% chance shot to hit once Dora's out of the distance, because that's just how that value works. It scales down the further away you get. So as long as we're here, we might as well talk about the gun accuracy as well. If I come over to a gun, 
and I look at its stats, it sees it gives me these four values, touch, short, medium, and long range accuracies. And these are accuracies at four, 15, 30, and 50 tiles respectively. Now notice this gun, this is an assault rifle. It only has a range of 31. So it's long distance accuracy is, I mean, it has kind of a use for calculating because as we'll see in a moment, those, those aren't sharp jumps, but it, it's kind of all, you know, not that, doesn't mean that whole lot, but you'll see right here, it's at 56, which the touch distance actually said, yeah, at 56, and we take her out, and it kind of stays there, but then what's going to happen is once we get out of this range into the next, we're going to see that's going to start to go up actually. But it doesn't go, it doesn't jump immediately all the way up to 70. Rather, it's going to scale up kind of gradually until uh, there we're at 61. Here we're going to be at 67. And then right at the edge of that 15 tiles, we're going to get to 70. And that's how it's going to work generally. So if, if the value kind of goes up and down, then you'll kind of scale up and down um, around those points to how much accuracy the weapon has at that distance. Now these values here, the weapon's accuracy, are determined by a combination of three different things. One is just the type of weapon it is, but the second is the quality. So higher quality weapons in general will have higher accuracies for the different uh, distances. But the third thing that also matters is how worn down it is. After a certain percentage, as the weapon gets more and more worn down, these numbers go down and down and down as well. Even a legendary sniper rifle at 2% is not going to have a whole lot of accuracy at any distance. Now, the last thing you want to look at is cover. Uh, almost everything that has a cover, it gives you cover, will have a cover effectiveness value. So here you see the sandbags are 65%. And many, when he wants to fire, uh, because they have a 65%, that means the sandbags stop that. So 35% is what gets through. So that's why the value of her getting hit is going to be the shooter accuracy times the weapon accuracy times 35, which is the, you know, which is the remainder, you know, 100 minus 65, uh, to get to that. And lot, you know, lots of things I've covered, uh, turrets, have 40%, that means that 60% will get by, so that value will be kind of cut down by that. Uh, solar generators have a cover value of 50%, so it'll stop half. Uh, butcher tables, 50%. Wooden beds, 40%. Dining chairs, at 35%, and so on. Of the things you can build to try to get cover, sandbags are the best, but the one exception that's even better is a wall. So we come down here to this wooden wall, and now we see this actually stops 75%, but doesn't actually give you a cover value when you look. And notice that value does not have any, uh, doesn't matter what kind of material it's going to be made out of. Again, we've got 75. We've got here a 75 and come up for one more and another 75. Now, uh, a couple things to notice here. One thing to notice is that uh, th this, this value, like, you know, obviously you can flank. So if many's down here, there's no cover at all. If many's up here, it stops 75%. But if many's down around here at an angle, see, it stops up 45%. So kind of as you come down, as you kind of more of an angle, you lose some of that, that cover. That's the first thing to kind of notice about cover. It's not, not static. The angles matter. The second thing is that uh, you have to be touching cover for it to work. So one tile out, no cover at all, come right back in, do have cover. But notice that uh, touching does include at like a kitty corner angle like this. So I moved her up to here. Not only do I, she, does she have cover, she's back up to 75%. So you can take cover at an angle uh, in this way. Now, one comment I get on a lot of my Let's Plays is to put up a roof because you get cover from being in darkness or from being under a roof. Uh, that was true in earlier alphas, but as of alpha 16, that's changed. So here I've got a little roofed area over a pillar. And notice if we take Dora to right here, she gets no cover bonus whatsoever despite being under the roof. If I bring her back to here, then uh, she just gets the regular 75% for the wall. She doesn't get anything above and beyond that. 
And notice also that, that turrets can take cover. Uh, if I hover over here, there is cover being taken from these sandbags. And notice also, like, I've got these sandbags that are kind of all around it. Uh, of all the possible kind of ways the angle might work, there's a one, two, three different uh, um, sandbags that could provide some amount of cover to this. And those all get added up. So 13 plus 39 plus 52 adds up to 75. So that knocks us down to 25%. So you can really like, even though these are only 65% total, you can get more of a cover bonus by having them kind of wrapped around like this. Notice also that the damage on a bit of cover doesn't make any difference here either. I've had Bjorn shoot this wall down to 20%, but Dora is still getting the full 75% cover bonus. Uh, from that wall. So as long as the wall isn't destroyed, you're going to be good to go. Now, because of the way that cover depends on angles, one thing you might want to do is what I've often done is put sandbags around a pillar like this. And that way, when you're shoot, when your enemies are shooting uh, at you from directly, you have the 75% cover from the wall. But when they're down here at an angle, you still have a bunch of cover from the sandbags. And you're still at about, I mean, now you've gone from 25% cover to 26% cover, which is still really pretty good. But something else also worth noting is that uh, open doors also provide cover. So if I'm standing in the door here, Dora doesn't get any cover at all, but if she comes back to here uh, behind the door, she actually gets the full 75% cover from the open door. And now if many comes down to about here, she actually gets an even better cover bonus because uh, although that the, the door only stops less, this wall now stops even more down to 22%. So this is also, I mean, just shooting out of open doors is a very, very effective cover position to be in as well. So what do we learn today? In addition to learning about the mechanics of exactly how those accuracy percentages are calculated, we've learned that the best kind of cover in general is walls. Turrets do take cover. Roofs do not. And one of these two constructions is one of the very best kind of cover configurations you can build. But that, I'm afraid, is all the time I have for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you want to look at next time in the comments. And I'll see you soon.